Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, a new clever girl from CRKT. We take a look at my Finch sub collection and then 10 super smooth knives, uh, something that uh, I don't know why, but lately, maybe it's because I have a fascination with Civivi ever since uh, uh, this old sword blade reviews gave me the keen natter, but now uh, these days I'm kind of uh, interested in smooth action. But that doesn't necessarily mean drop shut. So we'll get to that. Uh, coming up. But first, let's do a pocket check. Uh, it's my first opportunity of the week to show off what I've been carrying and uh, and talk about it a little. And this is also a good opportunity for you to write down in the comments below, once you subscribe and like, uh, what you're carrying. I'm always interested. We have a, uh, a very classy audience here, and uh, I like to know what everyone's carrying on the daily. All right, so here we go. Today, I am carrying something I haven't carried in a long time, and that's this Spyderco Military, kind of a classic in the uh, tactical modern folding um, world here. This is a big knife. This is the knife that Sal Glesser designed when he was asked what he would design for his son, were his son to go into the military. And this is what he came up with. This is pre-paramilitary uh, two, I believe that came after this. And then obviously the three uh, much further after that, but it's a nice long, four inch blade that's s30v which was the super steel when it came when this came out does that mean it's not a super steel anymore because there are superer steels i'm not sure uh but i still love s30v never done me wrong uh so really like this nice long generous handle uh yes and there is the 800 pound gorilla in the room the tip down only clip situation on this knife is a little bit exasperating i gotta say this day and age okay i get it why they didn't originally do it uh, that's because they wanted to keep this very large knife light so they did not continue steel liners uh down down all the way to the end of the uh handle they just sort of uh had the the lock side sort of taper off as you can see down there and terminate with uh, as little steel in there as possible and then on the g10 on the um, front side sorry it's dusty in there got to clean this knife uh the metal stops right about here so and you cannot adequately anchor uh um, clip screws into g10 so but I say, man, we have the technology now, certainly Spyderco does, to mill out a little pocket here, just a little pocket, and uh, fix a, a little steel plate in there. So we can have the para, uh, we can have the military here, which is in just an outstanding knife in in all but one way, and uh, have it tip up. I say they can do it. I bet they can do it. And uh, I don't want to have to go to the secondary custom market to have a situation where I can have a a tip up military. But hey, I didn't bring this knife on to uh, to moan about it. I really love it. And I haven't carried it in a long time. And this one is special to me because uh, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, this one I sold to my good friend, uh, Ian Lewis, uh, master of the martial arts, specially bladed. Uh, he kept it for a while, uh, kind of locked up. And then and then I bought it back from him because he never used it. And uh, he he was too precious with it and he didn't want it anymore. So I bought it back from him. So this has been through a number of hands, which uh, which I, I find interesting, but also my brother and father just coincidentally both have the same knife um, and they do not have sprawling knife collections. So uh, it's kind of interesting that we all ended up with uh, full black militaries. So I'm wearing, the, uh, wearing carrying this today it's not pocket jewelry, I swear. Carrying this today and uh, really hoping that a four-inch cutting task arises, uh, and I will tackle it with that. Uh, next up, I am carrying um, the Fox Knives Recoil. We just did an interview uh, conversation with Mike Latham of CollectorKnives.net. Mike Latham designed this knife and had it exclusively made by Fox Knives for CollectorKnives.net, and and it is finally I've had this prototype for quite a while, uh, and then uh, you know COVID and all that, and so production was slowed down at, at uh, the Fox factory. So people have been asking over the last year or so, where can I get the this recoil? You know this cool gunstock jack 
made by Fox Knives with M390 blade steel, beautiful clip point blade, fully flat ground, very sharp, awesome micarta, and fully integral uh, bolster and liner. That's one piece of titanium on both sides. Uh, they just mill out a pocket here to put this. Uh, to put this, they've been asking when this is available. Well, this is available now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at, on collectorknives.net, you should know. And there are some really cool handle covers. Uh, they have one um, cool carbon fiber, and you know, I don't say that often. Uh, or maybe I'm saying that more and more these days now that carbon fiber has gotten more interesting. Uh, but they have an interesting carbon fiber. They have a wood, uh, I think it's a coca bolo or a rosewood, can't remember, uh, some sort of wood there. And then um, uh, an, a neat acrylic, and then something else, I can't remember what it is. Micarta, two micartas, an ivory and a green like this. Uh, but all that being said, this is a really outstanding uh, slip joint, especially for those, a lot of people like just single bladed slip joints, keeps them thinner and uh, it's more a format, more closely aligned with this uh, sort of modern tactical folder. Uh, great thing, I'm gonna go to this, to this main camera over here because I want you to hear this. It has a spectacular walk and talk and, and you can hear it here. That's to the half stop and that's closed. Now, a really great thing about this is that I'm not sure, and Mike Latham said that he isn't sure either how they achieved this, but Fox Knives achieved a really interesting pull on this knife. So when you have it all the way closed and you open it, from the closed position to the half stop, it's very easy. You're not, you're not digging your, na your nail in the nail neck and prying it open. It comes open very easily to the half stop. Then from the half stop to fully open, it's a much stouter pull. And uh, it goes the same way in reverse. To close it, it just it's a pretty stout push. And then it does that little uh, wily Coyote thing at the half stop that I like. And then uh, from the half stop closed, it's much easier. So it's really interesting. Two stage opening in two different ways. Two stage A, because it's got a half stop and two stage B because it's got two different pull weights um, uh, on the open and on the close. So an interesting little uh, side bit, uh, Mike takes no credit for it, um, at, but it kind it, it seems to be, uh, if, if, if the conversation we had is accurate, it, it, it seems to be consistent across this new line of recoils. So I'm very excited uh, that this recoil is out. I wouldn't mind getting another one just to have a, a, a different, um, scale material, but not for nothing. You could remove that scale and easily swap it for another. So it'd be cool if they made uh, different scale materials uh, available also. All right. So that is my carry today. What is yours? I'm curious. I got to know. Uh, you can either leave a comment down below or you can do the old fashioned thing like I would do and pick up the phone and give us a call. 724-466-4487 gets you to the Knife Junkie listener line message. You leave us a message. We will accumulate the messages uh, stitched together. We, the royal we, Jim will do this because he's he's our mastermind uh, technically, but stitch together an audio montage of your comments and put them on as long as they are polite people. And as long as it's not, I, I need uh, an appointment with Antonio. Uh, my hair is getting long and my perm has relaxed. I've gotten messages like that. It's kind of like, I am not a hairdresser, people. I know uh, sometimes I might, come across as one, but I am not. So there you go. Uh, listener line, let me know what you're carrying. Uh, next up, I just want to talk, give a, a little uh, hint as to what's coming in the next uh, Patreon, uh, in the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway coming up this month. I'm doing a, um, a budget blowout. That's what I'm calling it, a budget blowout bundle. So I'm going to be putting a couple of knives in this box that goes out to the lucky winner, representing some budget items that really punch outside of their weight category. I have one and uh, there's another one that... Uh, okay, so this is what I'm doing. I'm covering three bases, slip joint, modern folder, and fixed blade. Uh, I do know for sure what the modern folder is. Uh, it is this Petrified Fish. Uh, Petrified Fish, new company making outstanding knives. This is the 818, I believe it's called. Uh, not sure, but it's got that really cool Hinderer-esque slicer grind on it. You look at the, at the, at the uh, grind line down here by the plunge, 
and it's short and it really expands up towards the front, making it really thin behind the edge. It's even thin behind the edge way back here at the Ricasso. Very sharp D2 blade. But what's amazing to me about this, this is a budget knife. This is under 40 bucks. And the action on this is, this should be in uh, my upcoming 10 smoothest knives in my collection, which by the way, right before we started rolling, I added two knives too. So it's, 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 a, it's a dozen. We're going for a dozen this time, 10 plus two. But in any case, this petrified fish is really smooth. This is a, a, uh, a bequeathment. This was bequeathed to the channel by uh, Dave, this old sword blade reviews. He has done quite a bit of that with us. It's, it's really cool because he's a maven. He's always out there looking for new knives and he doesn't keep them all. And he sells some and he makes videos of all of them. And then he moves some along and he, he has gifted the channel quite a few knives like this. And it's greatly appreciated, Dave. But all of these knives that I show you are going to be blue. Uh, I am going to... Uh, where is it? Where? Oh, here it is. Uh, the slip joint will be the famed and loved, much loved uh, blue micarta work knife from Rough Rider. And then I have a... Uh, an idea for a fixed blade that is blue also, but not goofy. Uh, maybe you can guess what that might be. Think of a, of, a, of a fixed blade that might be blue that people take very seriously, and uh, and it will be that. So it will be a bundle, a budget bundle blowout here. So I'm very excited for that. I don't know. I think, I think it's been started by just exposure to some of these, these knives and some of these, uh, well, more more budget oriented knives, but that are so amazing. Like this, this, um, this D2 petrified fish in, by the way, this blue, this color blue, I love it. And I've seen it on artisan cutlery knives. I've seen it on a number of knives. This, this blue G10, it's a gray blue. Imagine a gray blue. Well, right here. And I want everyone to pay attention just, just to me for one second here, because I'm about to coin what this color is called because people are always like, oh, it's, it's, like it's like a gray blue. It's like a blue, it's like a blue, but it's not like a real blue, blue. It's not a Royal blue. So this is what we're calling this. This is called thunderhead blue, thunderhead blue. It looks like a thundercloud moving in. It's kind of blue, kind of gray. Um, it's not your uh, happy go lucky uh, blue of the Endura or Delica. This is Thunderhead Blue, so that's what we're going to call this. Uh, anyway, that's long for saying. I'm very excited about about some of the budget offerings coming out. So this month we're going to focus on a few of them. Uh, and that fixed blade is, by the way, if you're trying to guess what it is, it's it is a classic. It's a modern version of a classic. So may, maybe that'll help you in trying to figure out what it will be. All right, so. How do you get that? How do you get in on this uh, this bundle? Uh, you join us on Patreon. Just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and uh, you can sign up for three different levels. And um, uh, really the, the, the top tier gentleman junkie gets you involved in this knife giveaway. So go check out what we have to offer there, uh, including interview extras, which are always fun. Uh, that's stuff that doesn't go out in the regular podcast uh, sort of conversations we have after we stop rolling. Those are very fun and a lot of other stuff. So go check that out. Just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You know you're a knife junkie if you're as happy as a kid on Christmas morning when that new knife arrives in the mail. Yeah, that feeling has not hit in a, in a, in a uh, uncomfortably long while. Uh, things have slowed down around here. I, I have decided... Uh, I don't know if I decided. Something decided for me. I just don't. Uh, I just don't seem to be buying as much right now. But I'm. I'm getting exposed to a lot, which is uh, even more important than expanding my own collection. Is being exposed uh, to new things. That is. Uh, anyway, some new things I have. I'm going to be showing off my sub collection of this brand uh, in a little while. Uh, but there are four new designs coming out from Finch this fall. And uh, one of them has already been released. That is the Cherry Bomb, a, a, an adorable uh, little spear point blade that has a, uh, uh, comes in two fashions. It's kind of like the, uh, it's kind of like the 1929 in that it has bolsters, uh, and but it comes in a bone or a wood material, I believe, or no, I'm sorry, an acrylic or a bone. And uh, it is a beautiful knife. So they're coming out with four new Finch knives. Um, kind of in, in uh, 
well, that cherry bomb looks a little bit like this. Uh, we have a, a new story we'll roll in here, and it shows it shows not only that this knife, this is the devil's finger. I'm sorry, this is the first one that came out this fall. I do apologize, the devil's finger. It is here right in my hands. Uh, this came out in October. In November, uh, beginning of November, they released this knife right here that we have on screen. That is the uh, cherry bomb. And now they have two new ones coming out. And I'm really excited about both of them uh, uh, because I'm, I'm going to add this one, of course, the Cherry Bomb, but I really want these two new ones that are coming up. Uh, the first one that's really interesting is called the Harvester. And it also has the bolster uh, like we have here on the 1929 uh, and the same sort of low profile flipper that turns into finger choil uh, or, or it's not a choil, it's the opposite, finger mound. But it, it's inspired by the uh, Sodbuster. Now, Spencer Markhart's uh, uh, in-laws have a farm, and both his father-in-law and his brother-in-law carry Sodbusters around the farm. And Spencer was inspired by this, and so he designed this harvester. Uh, it does not have it. It does not have a, a typical Sodbuster blade, uh, which is sort of a straight-bladed. Uh, uh, it's like a well, it's a bull belly blade. It's just a sort of a drop point. Uh, this is a downward angled straight uh, sheep's foot blade and man alive. I think it looks, I, I cannot wait to get this one. This one really looks like a good user, good cutter, though it's a little bit bigger. It reminds me of the Finch Runtley, like it might take up a similar role as the Finch Runtley. And you can see it has the same opening methods. You either have that small flipper tab or you have the nail nick. Of course, the nail neck on the Runtley and probably on this too, really ceremonial, uh, but a, a, also a tip of the hat to these old fashioned knives that really inspire the guys over at Finch Knives. You don't need it to open it, that nail neck. You can just grab it because there's way ample blade sticking up above the handle. But to see the nail neck reminds you, hey, we're inspired by these old fashioned kind of slip jointy style knives. So does the shield in the middle of the handle here or in the middle as you see on the harvester some people some killjoys poo poo this they poo poo this people and to me this is one of the most interesting design flourishes of finch knives or you know it's one it's it's that unifying um theme throughout all of them and i love it and uh, not for nothing but it does have that sort of uh, watch loom material under that sapphire crystal over the f that badge is actually Sapphire Crystal with Loom because uh, Stephen, uh, the other uh, co-owner there, owns a watch company, uh, Raven Watches, I believe it's called. And uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a nod to that too, that tradition. So anyway, very excited about the Harvester. And then the last one is really cool too. Uh, these are both, uh, this one here now, uh, the Drifter, as you can see, has that sort of uh, aggressive. They're calling it a California clip. I think that's just because it has a pretty long clip on top of the blade there. More than half of the blade is the clip. Uh, but oh, man, I think this is a beauty. That is a sub three inch blade. I wouldn't mind seeing an XL drifter, uh, but I love that coffin shaped handle, a real um, a, a real sort of reference to the, the coffin shaped Bowie handles of uh, days of yore. And then that, uh, that Bowie shaped blade is just gorgeous. I mean, if anyone who is looking at this can see that it almost the cutting edge almost resembles a Tanto, uh, that, that belly is, is comes to a, an angle, almost comes to an angle. So it almost looks like you could use that belly as a secondary tip, like you might with a Tanto. In any case, this one is going to come in bone and wood as well. And just classic materials on these modern interpretations of classically vibed knives. Uh, these, uh, these are sub two inch. This one, the, uh, the, I believe the harvester is three and a quarter or three or 3.1 like, like this, um, like the devil's finger. Uh, but, uh, very exciting, very exciting. These guys are knocking it out of the park and they're really building up um, a, a, a body of work, you know, four in one season. That's pretty good, you know, and I, I like how they're doing it and great guys too. So, uh, that's four new knives from Finch and next CRKT. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, of course you remember this, you know, this, they have their, um, forged by war series and it's a series of knives that, uh, Columbia river knife and tool 
collaborates on with knife makers slash designers who are combat veterans and they make designs uh, and have them, or they design knives or custom make knives and have them produced, mass produced through CRKT. One of the most famous ones, uh, or popular ones was The Clever Girl by Austin McGlan. And uh, it's it's a Persian, it's like an upswept uh, uh, Persian self-defense knife. I mean, uh, you can see a kukri right here. This is the new one, but uh, the, the original Clever Girl, same exact handle uh, with that uh, noggin knocker there on the end. And it had an upswept sort of uh, Persian-y kind of blade, really beautiful, uh, sharp, defensive implement. Well, the new Clever Girl, this Kukri, has a seven and a half inch uh, downward swooping Kukri blade uh, that allows you to do a lot of things. It is not just a self-defense implement. It is not just a tactical knife. It is, uh, which it certainly could be used uh, uh, used for with, with great aplomb, but this is a... Uh, meant to be an all-arounder. So you're a soldier or you're someone who's out in the bush a lot. This is not only going to work in a, de a defensive uh, uh, defensive role, but it will work in a uh, brush clearing role. It will work in a uh, uh, kindling role, you know, batoning. You can baton with this sucker. It's just a little chopper. I mean, seven and a half inches is, is a sort of the combat classic length. That's like the uh, the K bar or the, or the Randall one. So this is actually, you know, a decently sized blade. Uh, I think of the clever girl, the clever girl was four and a half inches. So substantially smaller than this. Um, but this thing looks gnarly. I love it. I love the deepness, the, de the depth. I think we have a word for that. I love the depth of that recurve and the, and the protrusion of that belly. That's what's happening here. If I don't, actually uh, really start exercising and going on a diet. It's looking just like this new uh, Kukri, uh, Clever Girl Kukri. Now, I, I like the name Clever Girl. I don't know if this is what it's from, but I, I always think of uh, of Jurassic Park, Clever Girl. Uh, you know, uh, the, um, the Australian game warden who's got the hat with the one side up, the bush hat and the spaz 12 shotgun, and he... he he gets hunted by the velociraptors and he comments on how clever they are because they're flanking him and clever girl. I always wondered if that's why he named it that uh, maybe um, not sure, but anyway, uh, very excited about this one uh, because I do like the clever girl. Originally, I like the forged by war series and I absolutely positively love a kukri. So keep your eyes open for that. Uh, that should be coming. When is this coming? Um, fall. Oh, the, okay, so this is a sneak preview. Fall. It'll be here uh, in 2022, it looks like. Sneak preview. Uh, 20, yep, be here in 2022. So keep your eyes peeled. Anyway, uh, so what, what do we have coming up? Coming up, we're going to take a look at my Finch sub-collection. We just saw a sneak peek. And then we're going to take a look at seven great, uh, I mean, not seven, ten great. Actually, it's gone up to 12 super smooth knives in my collection. We'll call it 10, parenthetically plus two coming right up on the knife junkie podcast and now that we're caught up with knife life news let's hear more of the knife junkie podcast it all started shortly after i joined the apex pass around group uh, apex pass around group the first knife i got on um, on to pass around was the finch runtley i was charmed by this knife in uh, videos that i had seen online uh, trusted people saying this is a great little knife. And so I got got on the list for it. It came to me. I made a video of it. I, I liked it very much, uh, especially the, well, I love the design. I love the utility. I love that flipper. love the blade shape. Uh, there's a vibe to it that I love. This is the first one I'd ever seen, first one they ever made. So that badge does just, just charm me, okay? And then uh, since I was the last person on the Apex uh, group list, it was time to do a giveaway for it. And they spun the wheel and I won. And so I was very happy to have this and to already have it in hand and then to have it be mine. Very happy about that. And then, uh, and then I interviewed the Finch guys and got, got a lot more. They send me a few and uh, here, here's, let's see, how did it go in order? I'm not going to do it in order. I'm going to do it in order of, of size because that's how I keep them in my knife case. Um, so what we're looking at with the Finch knives are, inspiration from traditional slip joint style knives, but in modern day flippers. 
especially flippers. They, they do love flippers. And they have come across, they have devised a magical uh, sort of mm, proportion and design for their flipper. At least I think so. And, and it's consistent across all the models that I have. And the flipper looks like this. When it's closed, it's very low profile. Uh, it's jimped on both sides. And when you actuate it, 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 it the, um, the setup with the pivot, the geometry with the pivot is ideal and it rockets out. It's excellent. And then once it's open, the flipper is a, a, serves a second purpose. And that second purpose is not as a finger guard to stop you sliding up onto the blade. It's as a finger choil to allow you to come closer to the cutting edge and use it. Because it's jimped, it allows you to rest your finger there. It's very comfortable, actually. And it gives you a nice little tension between your thumb, which is pushing forward, and your forefinger, which is pulling back on the flipper, on the jimped flipper. So it really gives you a great, great forward grip on this knife without wasting any cutting edge on a choil, on a finger choil. So really like that uh, flipper design. Um, this, by the way, is in night crawler bone. So it's that red, almost looks like a worm, you know, with the with the different sort of with the different depth in that red. Uh, night crawler bone. All right, next, ribbed. I think they call it ribbed because it's serrated that way. Uh, or striated that way. Okay, next, we're going to look at I think this is my favorite, but I, you know, to call out favorites doesn't it doesn't really do anyone any good. So maybe I shouldn't, but I think this is my favorite anyway. And that's the holiday. Uh, it's got two L's. That's because it's named after Doc Holiday. Not we're going to go on a Roman holiday. Uh, this is the Doc Holiday. So this is a knife. And interestingly enough, Doc Holiday, uh, the handle was inspired by the doctor's knife. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Doctor's knife is a slip joint pattern from the 1800s. Uh, that is long and slender and comes to a very uh, abrupt 90 degree pommel here. And that on um, the original doctor's knife is that so you could use that to crush pills. You, you come for a house call, someone's sick, you come to their house. I'm going to give, I'm going to make you a little, uh, a little uh, tincture here and we'll take this pill. We'll grind it up with the pommel of my doctor's knife. And then a traditional doctor's knife has two blades, a long slender drop point or a long slender spear blade, and then something that looks like a long spatula. And the spatula is to scoop up said pulverized pill, drop it in a in a, a liquid, and then stir it up into a potion, you know, however they did medicine back in those days. Uh, but so this is uh, a, a, a tip of the hat to Doc Holiday and also the doctor's knife. And I absolutely love it. That Warncliffe blade is killer. Uh, this is 154 cm blade steel. Oh, and by the way, let me let me call these out. This is also 154 cm and this is N690. So the Runtley is N690 and then 154 cm, which by the way is probably my favorite blade steel all around. I love 154 cm. I feel like the world's best sharpener with it and I I also feel like the world's best cutter with it because it gets and stays so sharp. Uh, okay, so that what is the Holiday? The Holiday has a 3-inch blade three and a quarter inch blade and fully flat ground. It's got a really nice kind of rubbed finish that I like a lot. Um, not mirror, of course, but nicely rubbed in the, in the direction of the edge and uh, has integral bolster liners in steel. And then you have this nice badge embedded in that really nice canvas micarta. So just a beautiful knife. This is a great utility knife cutter but it's also a great knife just to have on you. When you pull this one out, even knife people, or non-knife people, I apologize, say, wow, you know, that's cool. What's that? I say, well, that's a knife. And, and then we get into it. Uh, next is the latest one I've gotten and the latest, the second to latest uh, at this point that they released this fall. This is the uh, Devil's Finger a beautiful 3.1 inch spear point blade that is comes to a, a really acute and rather needle point edge, needle like edge here. Uh, I, I very much like that tip. Now the um, 
the one I don't have that just came out, the Cherry Bomb, is sort of a uh, a um, kind of a mashup between this knife and this knife. You get the bolster set up here, and I think it's a little smaller than this, or I know it's a little smaller than this, but you get this sort of a spear point, very needly spear point blade. So it'd be very interesting to get this, uh, to get that. This one is, uh, I've got this one recently. Thank you uh, guys at Finch. They sent this to me. I really love it. I've been carrying this one a lot. And when they sent it, you know, it's like uh, the factory or they oiled up the uh, micarta so that it was bright coral red and very uniform. And uh, I like that. I, I like to oil my micarta sometimes too and then rub it in. And uh, But this is what I really like is once once it soaks in and you see, you can see the weave more of the canvas. You can see some of that, uh, that white is the epoxy I'm assuming. And, uh, and, and bits of fabric, you know, little tiny little furry bits of fabric because this is canvas compressed with heat and epoxy. So, um, you know, it is ultimately just like a piece of fabric, just a very thick one. Great knife. Okay, so my last Finch knife, not uh, not not the last ever, of course. The last I have to show you today, because this is, as you can see from the lower third, my Finch collection thus far. There are more to come. I love these knives. I love these guys. I love you guys. They are really awesome guys. And even if they were making cruddy knives, I might be apt to buy one just because I like them. But uh, I just want everything they produce because, A, I love their design language and and i love the charm of these knives and and it, this these to me are truly collectible uh but not in the case knives sort of way you know all right so this last one here is the cimarron and uh this one more in line with the construction of the not the construction but more in line with the look of the runtley and that it it is just straight g10 this g10 has two layers and these um, com this Cimarron comes in three varieties, this gray and yellow. Uh, there is a, an orange and deep, uh, uh, let's see, uh, an olive drab and safety orange, where the safety orange is on the inside. And then there is a blue and green with a Kelly green on the inside. All beautiful color combinations. I mean, to me, it would be worth having all three of them just to be able to look at those colors next to each other. They're very beautiful, and they were inspired by the co different colors in sleeping bags and other camping gear uh, that the guys who who run Finch use, because that's that's another part of their inspiration. Besides old knives, it's camping and the great outdoors and doing stuff outdoors. This, by the way, really should be in my um, upcoming smoothest knives list uh, because it is utterly, utterly disgustingly smooth um, and if you grab if you uh, close it by hitting the lock bar way back here you can just do it you can just flip it in without <laughs> without even touching it so very great very great action on this beautiful knives look at this look at this lineup here look at this lineup just a really I don't know I, I really like this sub collection I got to see it grow and now I'm starting to feel like I need to have everything they make and I don't know if I need to go down that route. Uh, maybe I do. What do you think? Let me know. Leave a comment below. Do you guys like Finch knives? I, I, I'm pretty sure you do. I know a lot of us do. And I know a lot of us have received uh, some some wares from them. Um, by a lot of us, I just mean like knife reviewers and stuff. Um, they do a great job at marketing. And a good thing because their work is awesome. Love the Finch knives. All right, so that's a good uh, segue into the smoothest knives in my collection. I said that I added two. I will do those up front. I will do those. Up, oh, 12 super smooth knives. All right, I will do it in order then. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, the last two we will just, we will just uh, go with. All right, so now how did this all come about? Why am I interested in smooth all of a sudden? Uh, like I said, uh, I'll use the first one as my illustration. This is the Civivi Keen Natter. And uh, this knife was really nice when I got it uh, as a gift from Dave. Works really great, very smooth. But as I've fiddled with it and played with it more and more, it has gotten just like, 
like suspiciously smooth. That's what I'm going to call it. Not disgusting, suspiciously smooth where you're like, hmm, is this loose? Is the pivot loose? And then you check for blade play. And alas, there's no play blade play. It is just those ball bearings have worn an extra smooth race right around that pivot. And now it is opening and closing with hardly any friction. Uh, so the keen natter uh, was really the one that, uh, you know, I, I, I come and go with the flippers and I come and go with this mattering to me. Uh, but lately uh, it has, but uh, because of this model, uh, and I want to get more Civivis because of this model. But expanding outward, smoothness does not necessarily mean bearings. Smoothness does not mean necessarily being able to drop shut. As you will see uh, from my second example, smoothness can come on washers. And uh, smoothness can come with a uh, thumb stud. But first, the Keen Natter. Uh, this one is N690CO. You got a hollow grind here uh, on the main bevel and uh, with this recurve, and then you have a flat grind up here on the forward portion. You can open this a number of ways. Uh, flipper, flipper tab, you got uh, the uh, thumb stud, and you got the thumb stud spidey flick, or you've got the fuller spidey flick. So four ways that I have determined you can open this knife. You might even be able to wave it open using that thumb stud if you twist it. I can do that with a lot of thumb stud knives. All right, so that is the Keen Natter by Shabibi. All right, next. This one is the Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. So now I chose, this is the first Atom I got. I have two Atoms. I think this one is the, is the smoother of the two, though. That's like, you know, picking nits because they're both incredibly smooth. Um, this one you know, you, you flick it out and you can feel that it's smooth and that it, it rockets out nicely just with a little nudging of the thumb. But what? Uh, but it's kind of a soft detent so that you can slow roll it without any issue. And uh, where you really feel the, smooth, the smoothness on this knife and, and I dare say on most, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, washer knives is on the close. The close of this is unhalting it is it is just perfectly smooth and it has no sticking spots it has no stages it just closes very very smoothly i mean you can you could actually shake it shut uh, not that that has much utility but um just if you want to test the smoothness of it you can do it that way so this is just a great <laughs> this is a great knife i mean uh, three rivers manufacturing gets so much love and that love is so deserved because their knives really just do what they're supposed to and they look good doing it. So, but so there's uh, the Keen Natter and the TRM Atom, two smooth knives, one on bearings and one on washers. Okay, next is the first knife I ever got where I was just at, like positively blown away by the action. And this is my uh, beloved Riot K2. Whoops. Uh, I love this knife. I will probably always keep this knife in the collection. Uh, there have been times where I'm like, I bet I could get a pretty penny for that. But I, I, I do adore everything about this knife from the, the blade grind to this spectacular action, which is what we're talking about here. This was my first fall shut knife. Um, the spectacular action, the beautiful bronze anodizing on this, on this incredibly milled and sculpted handle. Um, yeah, everything about this knife is a win, and uh, I love it, and I'll probably never get rid of it, but yeah, it's this action that really won me over once I got it. So this is the same thing. If you get your thumb out of the way, it just kind of falls shut. Beautiful knife. Riot K2, uh, knife joker for a while. I'm not sure if they're still doing this. Had a whole bunch of exclusives of that knife with different fat carbons, different treatments of uh, titanium, et cetera, et cetera. So check them out. All right, my next knife is one that is not readily available, um, unfortunately, because this would be a boon to the knife market. Uh, this is the Niche Designs ingress and uh, this is we produced we knife produced this knife this is a prototype this is his uh, proto second prototype of three and uh, uh he generously gave this to me and i i really greatly greatly i'm honored and appreciate it because uh 
it's a rare bird and and it is really a spectacular uh, specimen but this this is what it's about right here that smoothness is you know it's crazy smooth and uh, so i don't have too many wee knives but this is we produced and uh yeah, they, they have a smooth thing down. Of course, the Civivi is also we produced. And uh, and so that translates through Civivi. And I would imagine Sencut also has this kind of just just utterly buttery smooth action. And now this one, uh, this one does not fall shut as readily as, say, the K2. Um, and this one, if you have to use your thumb to close it, that's, again, where you are going to feel that real smooth action so that's the ingress this one is um prototype number two nick rogers designed this i believe this is 20 c 20 cv steel and uh you know titanium which uh, by the way this sort of cross hatched titanium feels so good in hand and it's very grippy it does a really nice job of uh of giving those fingers that wrap around the uh, handle a real nice place to to grab into so Really cool knife. Can't wait to see more from Nick Rogers. I know he's working on a slip joint. Can't wait to see that. Uh, maybe he comes out with another version of that. That'd be cool. A knife that kind of inspired that knife right here from uh, our, our good old buddies at Spyderco. This is the uh, Yojimbo. I can't do anything with my left hand today. I'm trying to be cool. Uh, this is the Yojimbo. And uh, this is the Yojimbo 2 on, on uh, washers and just incredibly smooth and by the way this is my smoothest uh, uh compression lock knife i do have the yojumbo works great but the yojumbo has an immense blade and so i think the blade weight adds to how smooth that knife is uh this is not a very large blade and it's hollow ground which means there's a lot of material not on it for the width of that blade and uh so really this is this is an example of pure smooth uh, because I don't believe it's aided much by weight. Again, washers, super, super, super smooth. And you know what? I, you know, most of us have rat twos or rat ones. Those could be right up here in this lineup. Actually, I didn't think of that until just right now because they are washers and they have that, that continuous close without any hiccups, without having to, without uh, having to surmount any detent balls or anything like that and just move smoothly. So that is the uh, uh, Yojimbo 2. This one is the 20CV uh, DLT trading model with uh, with uh, uh, carbon fiber handles. This is from a few years ago. Uh, their most recent exclusive with the Yojimbo was 20CV coated, I believe, black coated with like a tan G10 handle. Looked very nice. Very attractive Yojimbo. All right, putting that down there. And next, my first bearings knife ever. And I didn't even realize that it was bearings that was making this knife so damn smooth. I'll just use my right hand from the get-go. Uh, this is the SOCOM Elite by Microtech. This is the 2012 version made in March of 2012. I love it when they date their blades, uh, when companies date their blades. Microtech does it, I think, with all of them. Uh, very, very, very smooth. So in 2012, these guys had bearings. Uh, I didn't know about bearings in 2012 on knives. And uh, so they had bearings and it wasn't even a flipper. So, you know, they were a little bit ahead of the game here with this knife. Uh, this is my dedicated uh, road trip knife. As you all know, I'm always talking about it. Every time I drive somewhere, I carry this uh, because of the glass breaker. It was the first knife I ever had with a glass breaker. So I started a tradition or superstition or whatever you want to call it. A great, great knife. S35VN. Also, this was my first S35VN knife. Uh, just just a fun fact. Bought it from a guy who was building a house in California and was uh, was underwater, and he needed to unload some knives. And so I got a good deal from that guy from on this. Uh, though it didn't come with the pouch and all the goodies, and now I realize it didn't come with the pouch and all the goodies. Uh, just a great knife. I'm going to put this down. Carbon fiber inlay. This was a first for me in terms of bearings, S35VN and carbon fiber. So love that knife. Best looking Tanto out there or one of them. All right. Next is a new knife to the collection. This uh, I just got from, um, 
from Samford Owen of Monterey Bay Knives. Uh, this came into my possession just to check out, and then uh, I, I did a little asking, and he said, sure, you can buy it from me. And uh, so this is an, uh, an ultra, ultra, ultra smooth knife from Monterey Bay Knife Company. Uh, Monterey Bay Knives. Here, look, I'm just going to. Yeah, it just it just closes, it just drops shut. One thing I love about this knife is that it is a titanium handled knife, like a lot of these, but it's not a frame lock, it's a liner lock. So both sides are continuous pieces, continuous meaning not interrupted by a lock bar cutout, continuous pieces of contoured, yum, yummily rounded uh, uh, titanium. It feels so good in hand. And then nothing you can do with how, how you grip it will affect the action because obviously the lock bar is not accessible to your thumbs or to, to the grip of your hand. It is only accessible to unlock, you know, on the, on the dorsal side. Some flippers, uh, I don't have one right here in front of me, but, but some frame lock, lock flippers, you can be pinching them closed as you try to flip them because you have the lock bar cut out here on that side where your fingers have to grip. So I love this knife for that. I love the design. Peter Carey is one of my favorite uh, knife maker slash, like I love his designs. He is a custom knife maker who is way out of my reach, just so out of my reach. Uh, but um, through these kind of collaborations with outstanding knife companies like Monterey Bay Knives, I can get into my hands a, a really, really good quality Peter Carey designed knife. And that's what this is. So this represents a lot of things to me too, because I interviewed Sanford Owen of Monterey Bay Knives and had a very nice conversation. Same thing with Peter Carey, had a very nice conversation with him. It's got that titanium, um, the, the full titanium has got the M390 and the liner lock, but this smoothness just takes the cake. Just takes the cake. I love it. So maybe, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Maybe I don't need to always analyze my, my knife taste. I just love that knife. And uh, I would love to have the handle anodized green, like that sort of um, um, copper patina green. Okay, next is another gift from Dave. Dave is a very generous guy. Check out this old sword blade reviews for an amazing collection and really uh, excellent uh, analysis and uh, videos of his knives. But this one uh, he gave to me for my birthday. Uh, I admired it. So when he got it, he got this one and a micarta version. This of course is the Boker Knives Smatch It. And this is a Chuck Cadritis design a Chuck Cadritis interpretation of the uh, World War II fighting, double-edged, 13-inch fighting uh, weapon. And uh, I think he did an outstanding job. I love this wood handle. This is rosewood. I love the fluting. I love the uh, sculpted titanium handle with fluting. It looks very Art Deco to me. It uh, looks like the kind of flourish you would see on things, not necessarily military knives, but on things coming out of the era that the Smatchet was designed and just ultra, ultra smooth. I don't know if you saw that, but here, I'll do it again. It just more than drops shut. It, it, <laughs> it's all, it, it wants your finger. It wants your thumb. Okay. Obviously it's, it's very smooth on, on bearings here. You know, it's, but also this is a case where that is a four inch blade. It is a big chunky blade, but it has fullers on both sides. It's dagger ground, though it does not have a, uh, uh, a sharp top uh, edge, but it's dagger ground. Uh, it's got those fullers, all, all of which means there's a, a lot of weight relief on that blade. So though it is a long blade, it doesn't seem an especially heavy blade. So I included, I included this because it just has a, a shocking smoothness. Like if you're, if you're closing it, manually like that you better get your thumb out of the way because all it takes is just the suggestion please close and wham it is it is there so the boker smatch it is a a shockingly and excitingly smooth knife this is a vg10 blade uh again here's here's the uh maker's mark of the designer let's see if i can get that to focus chuck gadritis also did an interview with him here on this show great guy got to check out his 
exquisite sculptural knives, sculptural folders, and switchblades at uh, Blade Show. Did a little interview with him there, as well as a full interview here on the show. So check him out. New England School of Knife Making. How cool. I didn't even know there was such a thing. And, uh, and there is. And it's pretty interesting. All right. Next up is a... Um, is a is a manual action thumb stud, um, uh, what do you call it, washer knife. I've said so many words in the last 49 minutes, I'm starting to sputter. All right, so this is the Spartan Harzi folder, one of my absolute favorites. And as you can see from my, from my logo engraved on there, um, a very special knife to me. After my interview with... Uh, with uh, Curtis Iovito, he asked me to send this to him, and he very graciously put my logo in there, and that was a thrill. So this is one of my favorite knives for that version, or for that reason. But even if that never happened, it, it is an incredibly smooth knife. Now, I do not have my Sabenza in this list, but I do have this, if that's an indication. And my Sabenza is smooth. Okay, so... This knife, you feel it, again, mostly on the close. How smooth and uniform that open is. My favorite way to open up this knife is to flick it. It has a great thumb flick there. But you can slow roll it, and, uh, you know, you can spidey flick it and do other stuff with it. You got that really cool arrow clip. They are, you know, Spartan blades, so their, their whole theme is Hellenistic Greece. Here you have uh, um, an S35VN blade. Um, now they're making them an S45VN. I think I got the very last S35VN. And I felt, you know, like a cake left out in the rain. No, actually I didn't. I'm fine with S35. It'd be cool to see a four on there, but, you know, I don't really know the difference. So I'm going to put this one down. Super smooth uh, thumb stud and um, washer's knife is the Spartan Hersey folder. Next. Mm, Maybe the smoothest of everything you see here. Perhaps the smoothest of everything you see here. This is my Vero Engineering Synapse, a real gem of a knife, to, to borrow a term from Nick Shabazz. I mean, this is a, a real little gem. Love this. And I want a larger version of it. I like it so much. All right, this one I got at Blade Show also from, uh, from Joseph and his wife at the Vero Engineering table. Uh, great people working that table. Joseph is an awesome guy. Uh, Check him out on interview here also if you're interested in, in this. Um, but he's got an interesting story as an engineer coming into knife making. And look at that. So smooth. And this is a three-inch blade, but it's acting like a five-inch blade that's like a quarter-inch thick. It's dropping like it's got weights attached to it. <laughs> so just an incredibly smooth knife. And what a fidget masterpiece. If if fidget is your thing, if you love fidgeting, or if you find yourself fidgeting, this thing is a true masterpiece for that. And obviously, it's a serious cutting tool, and it's not a toy. But if you nervously flip, wow, this is an awesome one. Uh, something I talk about all the time with this knife is this outstanding flipper design. Uh, I don't think Joseph was the first to do that. But the way he executed it is perfect. It is perfect. I'll say it's perfect. I can't imagine how you could make it better. Um, so the first time I ever saw that style of flipper where it doesn't protrude from the, the dorsal uh, side at all, it just, it's forward, but it's not a front flipper. It's, it's on the other, you know, it's on the back side. was when people were taking the Boker Quaken and modding them. And turning them into flippers. When when the Boker Quaken only had one model, now they have 17 and a half million. But before they had that, they had one model and it was a, a, a thumb plate opening knife. And so some people, some smart people took those knives and modded them by by grinding out a little a little section here, revealing the tang of the blade. So you could grab the tang of the blade and flip it open like that. That was the first time I ever saw that. But this is designed for that and optimized for that. And everything about this knife, everything about this knife is outstanding. I absolutely love it. Uh, some of these knives that are so smooth, like you don't want to close them with your finger. You don't want to do that tradition, you know, the, the way we all kind of 
you know, close it with our fingers and maybe sometimes push it down with our thumb. You don't want to do that. You just kind of want to let it drop because just a gentle nudge and it just, it will close on its own. So yeah, sometimes you just want to let it drop. All right. Gonna, gonna do my little stacking thing. Do you remember knife stacking? Is anyone here old enough to remember knife stacking? Sort of a ridiculous uh, meme in the knife world a few years back. All right, uh, second to last here, or penultimate knife in this list of smooth smoothness is, yes, that's right, the AD20 from Demco Knives. This knife is smooth every which way. I mean, all these knives are smooth every which way, but you feel it. You feel it. This is a large, chunky hard use knife and you pick this up and you don't expect it to just fly open like that with such ease and then bringing it back in just pulling back the shark lock and letting gravity do its thing or whipping it in and out again a fidget masterpiece they came out with the um demco knives for, uh, first production knife uh the ad 20.5 in the shark's foot, that's a sheep's foot blade, and the clip point like this blade, produced out of Taiwan. Awesome knives, much smaller, in, in pretty much, well, much thinner and shorter models. And I love them, they're great, but they don't fidget quite as well as this knife. And I think this is a case where the, the width, the, the chunkiness of the blade stock uh, aids in the, in, the, in the action here. Uh, the regular, the AD 20.5s are super smooth and super fun to play with too. Don't get me wrong, but this has such an ease. It's like, you don't have to do anything. It does it for you because it's just kind of big and heavy. Uh, this one that you're gazing upon right now came from River's Edge Cutlery in Ohio. Uh, Lavender Pants 86, a friend of the show, um, spotted it and, and uh, spotted six of them. Knew I wanted one, sent me a picture and I ordered this. I got this from him and paid him back. Thank you again. I will never forget that. Uh, such a great knife. This is 20 CV steel and uh, really, really nice, nicely ground yet robust blade grind here in the clip point. Love the Demco boys. They're awesome, awesome guys. And they make, I, sh I shouldn't call them boys, the Demco brothers. I love them. They're like awesome humans. And then they make these things for us. Man, double the love. All right, last is a very new knife to me. And um, this is the reason the Sabenza isn't in here. It's because I'm putting the Umnums on in here. And the smoothness here is, uh, it's, you know, kind of ridiculous. Uh, we have, you, you do have to learn kind of how to open this knife. Now, if you see those thumb studs, they're smooth and they're domed. You can see it against my thumb there. Smooth and domed. And they put the, these little rubber gaskets. And until you actually have the knife in hand, like I thought oh, I would take those off immediately. No, they, uh, they are great because A, they allow you to grab. Those thumb studs are also the blade stops, you know? So they, they need to be there. They allow you to grab the thumb stud and flick it open. And, and then when it opens, it doesn't clack open it. It's very quiet because of those those uh, gaskets there so they lock in there but the, it's not like the gaskets add play or anything it's not like rubber there to to cushion it so it locks up really tight but it's but it's uh you know kind of quiet and then just ultra glass on glass smooth so I love this thing and I like, this is refined, truly refined action. You know, it's, it doesn't fall shut by any stretch of the imagination, but the feel of just retracting the blade, bringing the blade back in with your fingers, you just, you feel the quality echo throughout this knife. All right. All right. There we go. I was about to get poetic there because I think I'm getting hungry and I get poetic when I get hungry. Uh, okay, so first we have the Civivi Keen Natter. Uh, that's uh, N690 and Micarta. We have the 20 CV and uh, Canvas and uh, Burlap Micarta TRM Adam. We have the Riot K2. We have the Niche Designs Ingress, and this one is uh, the number two prototype. Spider Co DLT exclusive Yojimbo 2. SOCOM Elite by Microtech. 
We have the uh, Monterey Bay Knives Turbo designed by Peter Carey, the Boker Smatchet designed by Chuck Adratus. We have the uh, Spartan Folder designed by Bill Harsey. We have the Omnumzon, the Demco 8020, and the Synapse by Vero Engineering. I'm glad there weren't any old wheeze with numbers or nothing with numbers in there because then I really wouldn't have gotten through that. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for uh, checking this out. I really, um, it was fun to, to kind of pull out my smoothest knives. As you saw, I, there were no finches in there. I, met, I was talking about them in the state of the collection. They easily could have been in there. There are a lot of smooth knives these days. And if you open yourself up to not just drop shutty uh, bearings smooth, then the list goes further and further so uh it's a rabbit hole out down but uh i look i look forward to going down it more all right so there you have it please join us on uh, all your favorite podcast apps we're on apple google iheart spotify stitcher tune in and many more uh you can watch part of it here and then finish it on the way to work that's what i do with a lot of podcasts actually um and then also uh, be sure to join us on thursday night knives tomorrow night for another awesome night of just hanging out right here at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and talking knives. You can join the conversation too by going to theknifejunkie.com slash join. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. It's so greatly appreciated having you here. And until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.